Billy Guyton, New Zealand Rugby has its first contracted player diagnosed post-mortem with chronic traumatic encephalopathy or CTE. Hey everyone, it's Coach H here. Welcome to my channel, Inspired by Union. I started this channel to discuss weekly results from competitions in the Southern Hemisphere, mainly Super Rugby and the Rugby Championship. Today I'm pivoting for an important discussion around CTE and head trauma in our sport. Billy Guyton. Billy is a former professional rugby union player who succumbed to his battle with CTE in May of 2023. I had the pleasure to be Billy's coach in 2012 and I've had the honour to call him my mate since then. I was bloody proud when Billy left North Otago as an outstanding club man and a Heartland representative to chase higher honours in Nelson where he went to high school. He shone there and club rugby was selected for the Markor in 2013 and plied his trade as a halfback. His 2013 campaign that he put together was strong enough to win him a contract at super rugby level with the Hurricanes. A journeyman at super level, Billy also kitted up for the Crusaders and the Blues. He would wear black for the New Zealand Heartland team and represent New Zealand Māori. His greatest achievement in life was being a dad for too short a period of time. We stayed in touch over the years, facing calls on Messenger. Billy was a guest player for my old sevens team and got us in the prize money. During pool play, he set us up from our end goal area as the team went coast to coast. And then in the final, he set up another try at the death. As I relocated to Australia, we stayed in touch and we had plans to coach together in the future. It hurts that I won't get that opportunity now. In one of our many conversations, Billy gave me the single greatest compliment to my coaching craft. It's something that I'll hold on to dearly. When Billy was forced into retirement, I knew he was in a dark place. I was involved in the sports industry in another collision sport. So I knew the data coming through on CTE and in my heart, I knew Billy had it. I remember how competitive Billy was and one game I had to sub him because he was throwing himself into absolutely everything and we were up by 30 points. This game had no bearing on our finals the next week. He wasn't happy, but that was Billy's mindset. The nature of our conversations were a clue to how tough Billy was doing it. Giving up his dream of playing professional sport and his symptoms beginning to affect his close personal relationships Billy was entering a dark place for himself. It was tough for Billy, going from being a hyperactive bugger and the life of the party to having to deal with the symptoms from his brain trauma. So what is CTE? CTE is a brain disorder likely caused by repeated head injuries. It causes the death of nerve cells in the brain, which is called degeneration. It gets worse over time. The only way to definitively diagnose CTE is after death and through an autopsy. CTE symptoms include confusion, memory loss, impaired judgment, impulse control problems, aggression, depression, suicidality, Parkinsonism, and eventually progressive dementia. I remember Billy as an absolute club man, a great mate, and a fella that would give you the shirt off his back if he thought it would help. He was as brave a defensive player as I've seen, and he wouldn't shirk or shy away from his responsibilities and the tough stuff. When Billy made the Markle and then the Canes the following season, it gave hope to Heartland players across New Zealand that with hard work and dedication, then perhaps you too could get an opportunity. I remember the first time I saw Billy play, it was a club game back in 2011. 
and even then he was far too good to be gracing Centennial Park in Omaru. When I was approached to relocate from Australia and coach club rugby the following season, I said I'd only sign on if the club could get Billy Guyton across for the year. I'm proud to say that I coached Billy. Today, I'm speaking to a dear friend who's played professional sports, but who also suffers from some of the symptoms that I've alluded to today. I'm joined by Joe Williams, 49 games of NRL, 46 for his beloved South Sydney Rabbitohs, former WBF junior welterweight world title holder, former WBA Asian title holder, suicide prevention advocate, motivational speaker, cultural man, wonderful partner and father, and all round good guy, Joe Williams. Joe, you've been a professional athlete and one of the most brutal collision sports on the planet in rugby league. You then pivoted to combat sports with a storied career in boxing. You live day to day with suicide ideation. Can you explain suicide ideation for our viewers and what concerns for your own health do you have moving forward? I think it's, uh, firstly, thanks for, for having me on to, to be able to talk about these topics. Um, it has improved a great deal over the years when you start to understand the narrative that's inside your head and what it is and, and all of that. Um, you start to have a bit more of a control about it. But I guess, you know, as far as the ideation goes, uh, it's a voice inside my head that tells me to die every day. Yeah. And whilst whilst it's not every single day around joe you should die it plants thoughts plans and ideas of not being here anymore and and that can be you know i don't want to go too much into um the depth of you know different different topics but it can it can have the conversation it 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 constantly converses with me almost challenges me to try and tempt fate, if that makes sense. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So without going too much into it, if there's a if I'm on a highway, it'll start to say, "Go on, run out there." You know, like things like that. If I'm gonna, you know, I, again, I'm 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 very safe in my messaging, so I don't want to go too much into the depth of, of um. I guess ways or means of how how of of what it actually says. But it tempts it tempts fate and, every day. Yeah, and so over time and and experiencing this, you've put strategies into place. What what are some of the strategies that you use for this? Yeah, for a long time it um, it just was that that dark dark voice that sat on my shoulder and just tiptoed around every every single conversation that I was in. So it, it, it challenged me when I was conversing with other people, when, when I'm walking down a street by myself. Um, so it's about trying to understand that narrative. And I could be, I can be driving along in the car with my partner in the car and that, that voice is at me. And then she'll just turn to me and go, is everything all right, Joe? And I'm like, did you, did you see that? <laughs> and she'll like, she'll like sort of, well, not laugh, but go, yeah, everything's going to be okay. Yeah. You know, so she's that constant reminder to go that, you know, everything's okay. So it's, it's about, it's about not acting on and, and understanding that when it's there, it's not real. Yeah. Right. So for a long time, it was so constant. It felt like it was real, you know, every, everywhere I went, everything that I did. So for a large part of, of the early days was about trying to dissociate what that is and the only way I knew how to silence what it was 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 through alcohol and drugs. Yep. So it was it was just trying to make whatever that is go away. And not just not just alcohol and drugs, you know, like the the deeper I go into myself and, and, and understand what it is and why it is and how come it is, um, I realise a hell of a lot of my behaviours was all around associating what was going on inside my head. So um, it's just a constant barrage of, of, of continuous talk 
uh, you know, I guess the, you know, negative head noise or yeah. the chatter that goes on inside our head that, you know, we used to, we used to joke about it a lot in the gym, you know, at, at training when I was playing in the NRL and cause you, cause you, you can look around the gym and, and you can understand who's going through it. You know, who, like I'm not saying other, other men in the team were going through what I was experiencing, but you know, when somebody in your clique is going through some head noise, you can just tell with, yeah. with you know, their behaviors. So it was, it was a running joke for a long time. You know, look, he's got some noise going on that kid, yeah. you know? So um, it was about firstly understanding what it is and uh, just putting in some good tools to be able to not, not amplify what it is. And, you know, the come downs of alcohol and drugs was, was firstly, it was about running away or silence and what it was, yep. but, what goes up must come down, and when it when it comes down, the noise gets nice and loud. Yeah, and you've you've abstained from alcohol and drugs for years now. How long have you been on that journey? Yeah, I'm in the uh, I'm in the the nineteenth year of sobriety, but uh, eighteen of those or nearing eighteen of those um, completely clean and sober. So, um, or, or sober firstly, yeah. not not completely clean from from other substance, but um it's been a journey you know whilst i've been you know nearly 18 years away from alcohol it's still a constant it's still a constant well you're surrounded chat. by it everywhere so yeah i'm proud of yeah. you brother i'm proud of you um it's it's a challenge it's a challenge h because as you said like it's it's normalized with society and, and everything that we do and rugby league and afl there have been some high profile deaths where these men um Husbands and fathers have later been diagnosed as having CTE. Are our sports, our collision sports, moving quickly enough to mitigate the risks of head trauma? I, it's a tough one, you know, and, and I'm no expert, you know, in this by all means, but in speaking to the experts, yes. I think I think we come back I think we come back to the game too fast. Yeah. After, you know, they're doing everything they can to mitigate what it is. You know, the, the tackles are getting lower and lower these days. And, you know, the, the, any of the sort of collisions with the head, um, we try to avoid all that sort of stuff within the rules or context of, the, of, of that within the rules of the game. Um, I just think that we don't have a long enough stand down period. You know, I think it's 11 day stand down period now if you, if you fail a HIA in, in rugby league. Yep. If I fail something like that in boxing, it's an automatic 30 day. Yeah. You know, so like boxing's obviously obvious because obviously obvious, but boxing's obvious because, you know, it's, it's about trying not to get punched in the head. So you understand that boxing's a very obvious one because you do get knocked in the head every time, every day, you know, um, where rugby league's not, but what they don't understand just the little sub concussive blows that happen at training that, you know, the, the collision stuff that, that we do when we're, when we're, we're training as a, as a high, high elite, high, high, I guess a high energy and an elite sport. Um, I don't think we have a long enough stand down period. And that's, that's what a lot of the, a lot of the experts have said to me. Um, around guys that have been forced into retirement because they're not getting their brain enough time to rest. Yep. And then when you don't have your, your brain enough time to rest, then obviously it's going to be a little bit, I guess, for, for a better terminology, softer, yeah. where, you know, it gets hit, it's going to blank out again. Sometimes around community sports grounds, you might hear some of the old schoolers say the game's gone soft, but even at amateur level, we're seeing community athletes are a lot bigger and, and stronger with the gym culture that we've got, the CrossFit culture now. Our community athletes are, you know, they're almost on, on par with some of the some of the elite athletes going around. So our collisions are bigger. Um, what do we do to change mindsets and get our community athletes to be self reporting? Well I think, you know, the the collisions are bigger because the game's getting faster and the athletes are getting stronger. Um, you know, with, the, you know, sports science of what it is, everyone's doing the, the, the next best training to, to get the next best result. Yeah. Um, 
so so the athlete themselves are becoming better at what they do um as far as terminology goes or as far as the conversation in and around community particularly from the old school guys you know yeah you do hear it yeah. you know you know the game's not what, what it was and and it's not you know but the game has evolved um the game is a thousand times faster than what it was then so you know for current athletes they could probably look back and i might get myself in trouble here but they could probably look back and say to those old blokes well how slow was your game yeah you know there was no athletes in your game right so it's like there's there's but i just don't think that's counterproductive um to sit there and bag you know what the game is then to what the game is now what i think we need is more of these old guys who are saying that all of their friends are having challenges behind the closed doors or they can't remember, they can't remember their own kids names. Yeah. You know, they don't know what day of the week it is, right? There's more and more, more and more, um, you know, retired players over a number of years, you know, challenges with, with the symptoms of CT whilst, you know, CT can't be diagnosed until post death. Um, there's more and more athletes with, you know, memory challenges yes. with things like dementia, you know, <laughs> like all of these, these different diagnoses around, around the brain, what it is probably the most noted one, you know, would have been super, super interesting if they actually studied his brain, but they, they, I don't think they did it because he's arguably the greatest boxer of all time. Yeah. Um, yeah. you look, you look at Muhammad, yeah. Muhammad Ali, yeah. <laughs> you know, so like, when, when, when you have a look at the, the type of, you know, whether it be dementia or, or uh, Parkinson's and in those type things, um, a lot of these old guys are more and more it's happening to. So, you know, I, I, I have the conversation with, with older, I just, just recently, actually, I, I ran into a, a, an older lady who who's known me since I was a 10 year old boy, yep. you know, when her husband was president of the local rugby league club that my dad coached at and he's got dementia now. And, and I said, do you think it's because of the old knocks, yeah. the old footy knocks? And she says, without a doubt, yeah. you know, so like, it's that, you know, we, we say, we say the, the older guys are saying now that, you know, the game's soft and it's not like it used to, yeah, it's not like it used to be. It's because in 50 to a hundred years, we want to be able, we also want to, we also want to be able to have a game. Yeah. You know, the way it's going is that we might have contact sport in the next hundred years yeah. because of, you know, litigation around, you know, what it is and, and how it is and, and the amount of money involved in that sort of stuff. Yeah. I'm glad you brought up, um, Muhammad Ali and that he didn't get his brain studied. So in Australia, there is a, there is a brain bank and former athletes can, you know, donate their brain for studies. Is, is this something that you would consider? Considered? Yes. Uh, it's, it's something right back. I think it was about 2015, 16. I, I said, I said to, I, I, I met with a researcher, uh, around this stuff and, and he actually said to me, um, Joe, would you be interested in donating me a brain? I was like, 100% of it. Yeah. Like, I'm happy to sign it over um, in a heartbeat. And I said, I just said, the only condition I get to keep it for a little, for a little, uh, a few, a few years yet until. And he goes, No, 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 it's all right. You know, yeah. we we wait until you're gone till we until we take it. Yeah. <laughs> so, mate, it's it's probably not much good to me once I'm not gone. Yeah. So you might as well put it to, to medical science to be able to get some answers around different things. But I, what I will say is important. Um, H yeah. is that. There, there is all this stuff around, around, um, you know, brain, brain trauma and the challenges that we have. What we also do know about the brain is that it recovers if we give it enough time to recover and we actually do the work to have it recover. You know, we're talking about what they say is neuroplasticity. And when we're constantly working the brain, it actually begins to regenerate and, you know, I'm, I'm living proof of that as well. Like my, my memory was if I get to about three o'clock in the afternoon, I could not remember what I did that morning. Yep. You know, I'd, I'd forget to pick my kids up from school some days and, and, you know, obviously forget, you know, meetings that I had if I didn't, if I wasn't really attuned to, to my daily calendar and, and, and that still happens, but there's little things that just come back to me, little things that come back to me now that, that just, um, it just is proof that 
with this, with this neuroplasticity process, the brain starts to rewire and starts to regenerate and build these new neural pathways that, that when you start to look after your brain, it starts to get better again. So whilst I'm not saying that I'm going to go out and play footy and box again, yeah. um, but I will say the work that I'm doing in the regeneration of my brain I'm having uh, I'm having some some positive results around it. I just had a uh, my uni supervisor, uh, my PhD supervisor. He actually said to me because you know I, I'd read I'd read text and, and stuff like that at university, and I had no idea. By the, the next day, I had no idea what I read. Yeah, not before, right? So, um, and he actually said to me recently, he goes, Joe, have you noticed that your memory is coming back a hell of a lot? I was like, Yeah, I have, and that I attribute to the amount of reading I have to do, the amount of the amount of I guess brain games yeah. that I do that are, that attribute to it, you know, actually working it. You go out and do 100, 100 arm curls a day, you're going to get big arm, you're yeah. going to get big biceps, right? If you work your brain every day, it's going to start to work as well. Yeah, amazing, amazing. Um, if there are former athletes, community, or elite listening or watching this, and they've got symptoms. Um, symptoms that have been discussed. What, what would you recommend for those athletes to do? I would I would recommend doing the, the amount of work, that, the, the most amount of work that you can do to actually you know help and regenerate your brain. So we spoke a little bit, touched a little bit about it earlier, H, around how I don't drink anymore. Yeah. Like, like that back in the day when I stopped drinking, you know, 18, 19 years ago, I didn't make a conscious decision because I was having ch challenges with my brain back then. But without a doubt, the fact that I'm not putting a thousand beers into it every weekend yep. is going to have a positive impact on, on how my brain functions. So looking after your brain, eating the right foods to help your brain. Um, you know, one thing I, 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 I do encourage a hell of a lot of people is to read. Everything we do is so autonomous with how we are as human beings. You know, like something like 90% of our behaviors are autonomous behaviors yep. that we just do. We get into a car and we know how to do it. We speak because we know how to speak. We sit down on a chair because we know how to do it. When we start to actually work on these subconscious behaviors, that that we can start to have some impact on, you know, on different things that we do. So we're so autonomous, like those behaviors that we have every day, that we probably take for granted the fact that we can read. Yeah. Right? I say to people who are having challenges with their brain, make sure you read as much as you can because it's constantly working what's going on inside our uh, in between our ears. Like the more work we do with our brain, the better it's going to be for our brain. The more the good foods we eat, you know, the more exercise and clean eating and all that sort of stuff, it has a direct impact on our brain. So, um if we have a broken leg, we're not going to go and hop on that leg every single day. We're going to do what we can to look after yep. it. It's just that with the brain is we can't see it. So what we need to do is start to look after the brain a hell of a lot more. So I just tell everyone, do what is good for your brain. Find If you don't know, find out. Um, and sometimes it might be, you know, giving up the sports that we love because a lot of the time, mate, the sport we love doesn't love us back. Yeah, yeah. Well, I appreciate your time. Um your honesty today, talking about this subject, CTE. Um, you've delved into into what you face yourself um, with your ideation, um, and you've shared, you know, some of the strategies that you use. And these strategies, you know, let's hope that they set that light bulb off with some of our viewers out there. I appreciate you coming on to Inspired by Union today and putting your knowledge out into the YouTube universe. Thanks, day. brother. You know, I, I'm someone who who won't just focus on the negative. If I've got a challenge with my brain, which I do, right, I'm going to do everything I can to fix it. Yep. So I'm not, not going to sit there and wallow in it and go, oh, this is it. It's stuff. There's nothing I can do about it. I've, I, I put a, a conscious effort into doing what's good for my brain. I'll research the good foods for my brain. I'll research what the reading does for my brain, you know, reading stuff about my brain actually helps my brain physically as well. So I'm not someone who just sits here and wallows in the negative of what's happening and throwing my hands up in the air. I'll go, you know what, if you've got an issue here, I'm going to work the best I can to the day that I'm not around anymore to try and help it. 
the more you work it, the more it's going to work. Yeah. Lovely, Joe. Appreciate your time and all the best. Thanks, brother. Always good to catch up. Today, we've looked at a life lost in part for the game that we love. We are a great game. Billy left an impact on hundreds and thousands of people because of the game that we play and the game that we love. Through the loss of Billy, I hope his legacy becomes an awareness for others that are in a similar situation as him to not only seek help, but to fight for the real help that you need. We also heard from Joe's lived experience as he battles every day to be around for his family. I usually ask viewers to like or subscribe my video. Today, instead of that, I just ask that if you play or you support your friends that play in collision sports, then please take head trauma seriously this season and beyond. And if you see that one of your friends is not quite right, please step in and say something. Support our community athletes to follow the protocols for rest and then for return to play.